Hey guys, this is Eric18989 here, and this is Unicum Bootcamp 102. We're going to talk about the fundamentals. If you ever go to like maybe a basketball camp when you were a kid or a teenager or anything, and you know the person running the camp would look at the whole group and say, "Okay, guys, this week we're going to work on the fundamentals. You know, your passing, dribbling, and shooting. Really, that's a good thing. In fact, that's a very good thing. Some of the best basketball players that I've ever lived. Yet, yeah, could they do spectacular things? Yes. But what really made them great is they mastered the fundamentals, and that's exactly what a unicum is." in World of Tanks Blitz. The Unicums and Super Unicums, they're, you know, oftentimes, they're not really spectacular tankers. Now, some of them are, all right? But a lot of time, anybody can be a Unicum. All you have to do is master the fundamentals. Uh, we're gonna talk about three different games, and on each one of these games, I'm gonna give you three different fundamental principles that'll really help you become a Unicum here. So I'm in the AMX CDC in this one, and the AMX CDC is not really a great tank. Uh, can it be fun? Yes. Would I recommend buying it? I would not. There's much better tanks. It needs a traverse buff. But what I'm going to do is aim for his track. You see that? If you shoot the front or rear drive wheel, you're going to track him and keep him in spot. I tracked him, someone else tracked him, and then he repaired it, and then I'm going to track him again. And watch this. He's dead. All because I tracked him. That's the big takeaway, the fundamental principle of this battle. Track targets, track enemies, especially when you see them in the open like that. That uh, Japanese tank, he wasn't even close to cover. He was sitting in the open. If you track him, you oftentimes you'll not even need to say attack. The damage will just come. The rest of your team will see that helpless tank out there, and, and, and they'll just kill him. So this IS-5 is a very good tank as well as a, a very good clan, so I know he's dangerous, and I, guess what I'm going to try to do? You better believe it. Try to track him. And I did track him there, but he repaired it. Even then, it slowed down his retreat just a little bit. So uh, I shoot him there, and look at that. A teammate tracks him, and it's because of the teammate tracks him, it lets me aim in and get the kill there. So both of our kills in this game have come from tracking. That's it. Track, track, track. Shoot those drive wheels. Shoot the front drive wheel. Shoot the rear drive wheel. It's in a great, greatest you know, advantage of doing that is when you can do it from the side or maybe at a slight angle where your shell will go through his drive wheel, so tracking him, but it'll also penetrate further and go into his tank doing damage also. So, you know, like I said, you know, when, when I first started playing this game, I used, to, I used to get mad when I would track them and not do damage or something. I used to be like, what in the world? Something's wrong, you know? No, now I'm happy when I track them. Once you know how to use that weapon, it is just, it's an awesome, awesome thing to do. So the RU-251, his track's already damaged, but he's a juicy target for HE. But he's trying to retreat now, so I'm going to switch to AP, and someone else already tracks him. And then I try to track him as well, just to make sure he repairs it, but he does not get away. The T20 kills him and finishes him off there. So as you can see, I was not the only one tracking. So there were several other teammates who were, I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but either way, they did track him. And that's what demolished their team. Three tanks out of those seven were killed by tracking. Their Japanese tank, the IS-5, and the RU-251. So that's almost half of their tank was taken out. Half of their team, rather, was taken out uh, just by tracking. It is so, so, so basic. But if you see a tank that is either moving slow, especially if they're coming out from cover sideways or something, don't just aim for the tank. Aim for the drive wheel. It's a lot of fun, and you'll also get a lot of assisted damage that way, too. So let's move on to the second battle, though. So what we've learned so far, track targets. Track the enemy tanks, especially when we're in the open. I'm in the FV4202 on dead rail here, and I, I, a lot of times I like going to the hills over on the right side of the map, but I notice I'm looking at the teams, we have four heavies. I highly doubt four heavies are going to follow me over there. So I'm going to crest this ridge and just a spot, and I want to show you guys some things from this battle. I try to sink the Hesh into the side of that E100, but he turns and another one does eight damage, so that's a bummer. And then look at that E100. Do you see how he's staring at me? don't go forward but i'm stupid right now and you know what i do i go forward so i try to sink one and I, I bounce but look at that i got hit by one of their snipers all of my tanks are not close enough yet so i'm the only one spotted and nobody on their team spotted so when i went forward chances are 
there was seven enemy guns locked and loaded in that one spot. I am not making that mistake again. I shouldn't have in the first place. I just got greedy. But I'm going to move my tank 10 feet over and I'm going to use this building and I sink a nice hash shell into the side of the turret of the E100 over 500 and then this one's for 470. So just like that, just from moving my tank 10 feet over and using a building, I'm still shooting at the same target. I just did a thousand damage without taking any damage. And he's staring at me, so guess what I'm not going to do? I am not going to drive out there again. Be stubborn about this, guys. Don't ever, ever, ever damage trade. If you know there's a gun pointed at you, do not go out there. See that T-54? He spotted me, and watch this. My gun is pointed at him right now. I am locked and loaded. What do you think he's going to do? Think he's going to pop out? I have no clue why he is, but look at that. He's coming out sideways. Uh, I guess I was unspotted my camo reset, but still if it you know that doesn't matter He should have known that my gun was pointed at him watch this again. Look at this. You got to be kidding me, dude You know don't do it if there's this tank looking at you do not Pull out there. I know it sounds simple, but it's just a fundamental thing You know don't pull out in front of an enemy gun. Don't be like that T-54. I made that mistake once in this match. That's the only time I'm going to make it in this match. So we go around the building there, and we sink another one into the E-100. And I am going to switch to heat just to secure the kill, because I don't want to take a shot from him. So we get that. And then right then, someone spots the 183. I load up with Hesh. I take a blind shot. I, it hits his track. It only does splash damage. I think it's like 71 damage it does, or something like that. But what I really want to take away from this one is... Uh, don't be a lazy tanker. I could have tried to crest that hill again if I didn't feel like going over 10 feet, you know. So many people that play this could be unicums if they'll take the time to not be lazy. You know, um, people that drive the VK4502B, the mouse, uh, or anything, any big heavy, if you don't take time to set up a side scrape and you go out sideways, listen, that's just laziness right there. I promise you, you're not going to burn too many calories on your thumb by moving your thumb a couple of centimeters, all right? Control the tank. Move your thumb, put that extra effort in, and get to a good position. If that means taking the, the, the two, three seconds to set up a side scraping position, then do it. If it means moving your thumb a little bit, moving your left thumb to go behind a building instead of cresting the same ridge when you know there's going to be enemy tanks over there, do it. There are many, many unicums. I'd venture to say most unicums, to be honest, are, are really nothing spectacular in, in their gameplay. They're just not lazy. Don't be a lazy tanker. Anybody can be a unicum. If I can promise you that if you decide not to be lazy and you incorporate some of these fundamental principles, some of these basic things like relocating, like resetting your camo, like side scraping, um, like, like like shooting preferred tanks, you know, making a priority, like just look, taking a couple seconds to look at the map and analyze, you know, if you have all medium tanks, they're probably not going to want to go heavy alley on, on Fort Despair. You know, just take the time to, to think about that and implement that. Don't be a lazy tanker and you will easily become a unicum. You could probably be a unicum in 30 days. Have, have a 30-day have a win rate at least of unicum if you just decide not to be a lazy tanker. So that's what I want to encourage you guys about with that one. It took a little bit of extra effort, but I did over 4,300 damage just from not being lazy. That's all it was. So we'll move on to the last battle. This is in the Shinobi. Great little tank. Listen, if this tank ever comes on the market, again, I got it on a 24-hour special. Uh, you need to buy it. If you see this, scoop it up. If they sell it for $20, buy it. It's worth every penny. It's small. It does not have good armor at all, but it has a very small profile. It has a great gun. Pretty fast rate of fire for Tier 5. 160 damage, which is pretty good for Tier 5. You know, that's fine. Um, it also has really great penetration on the AP round. I hardly ever have to use Pramo in this. So, In this battle, we're going to learn how to stay in cover and shoot from cover. I'm going to stay back here and I'm going to see this Leo popping forward. He's not in cover. In fact, he's YOLOing. He's hit point trading. Hit point trading never helps your team. Sure, he did 200 damage to me, but guess what? He's dead. Don't ever, ever, ever hit point trade, guys. 
if you might think, but I'm helping my team because I'm getting damage. You know, you're doing damage, but you're also giving the enemy damage. So it doesn't help your team. Don't buy into that lie that hit point trading helps your team. It never does. Almost never. And if you look at me, I'm not going forward. I'm staying behind this ridge right now. As long as you have shots, you know, stay behind. That M4 and that T14, I would not recommend being being that close. And they really they don't have any cover there, you know. By this time, we're all swarming them, so it's okay. But earlier, they were just taking damage when they didn't have to be. They were sitting in the open hit point trading. And the only reason why they survived is because we had more guns than the enemy. So, um, but anyways, don't don't ever hit point trade. I see the mini map and I see a heavy at our spawn. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna pretty much stay here for the rest of the battle. We're gonna use this ridge on that ARL comes out. He's coming out sideways. Remember what I said about being a lazy tanker? He's just he's just concerned about doing damage and he's taken way too much here. And I'm not going forward. I'm hauled down behind here. I'm shooting from cover. Do you, do you notice this? I did it all earlier as well. Because I'm shooting from cover, he's a heavy tank. He did not have the gun handling or the accuracy to really hit me such a small target. And then I'm gonna go forward here. I rush a shot and bounce that one. But it's okay, I'm using the same hill that I used against the ARL, against this KV-1, as well as the hill in front of me. So I'm shooting from cover. I'm being a really, really hard target. That KV-1 is completely in the open, and I am not completely in the open. The M4 also, he I get a sneaky shot into him there and get a cool fire. But uh, he's coming out sideways as well. He's just being a lazy tanker. Um, I'm staying in cover. I'm not going to take a hit from him until I choose to, which I'm going to choose to take a hit right now only because I want that kill. But every shot I took, I was doing the shots from cover. Go from cover to cover. Don't just wander out there and sit there like you saw some of my team do early. Don't YOLO like that leopard did. I know this is basic stuff, but this is all it takes to be a Unicum. Before you hit the forward button, know where you're driving to. You better have that piece of cover, that rock, that ridge, whatever, have it picked out, all right? Uh, know where you're going and shoot from cover. So we have the golden arches there on the Shinobi. Great tank, great credit grinder also. Highly, highly recommend it. So what we learned in this video, we learned some of the fundamentals of tanking, the fundamentals of World of Tanks Blitz. We learned to track tanks, uh, we learned to do never, 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 never go out with uh, a tank as looking at you, ever. Make him shoot somewhere else. Let your team go forward. Use your team. Now, I'm not advocating camping. You know, I was doing damage the whole time. So I'm not saying, you know, camp in the back. No, but shoot from cover. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Eric18989. Have a good one, guys.